Greetings viewers and welcome to another episode of ETCG1. Here we talk about things other. <laughs> and it's these are not repair videos, these are opinions. And uh, I throw out my opinions and ask for yours. And we all get along and life is beautiful all the time, isn't it? The last couple of videos, I've had a lot of people say, what do you think of the flat rate system? And that's a really great topic for discussion. So let's talk about that today, the flat rate system. For those of you that are not familiar with the flat rate system, the flat rate system is probably how I would say 90 some percent of your technicians out in the world get paid. And basically what it is, is for every job that is done on a vehicle, just about every job that is done on a vehicle, someone has sat down and come up with a labor time for how long that job should take. That shop that that technician works for has an hourly labor rate and they base basically how much they charge you for labor on that estimate. So there's, there's a book, it's, I believe it's called the Mitchell book, um, is, is probably the most popular. I'm sure there are others that are out there and I'm sure other countries may have different labor times. Not really sure on that. Maybe you can comment on that on this video. But the bottom line is, is there's a book somewhere um, that basically has a breakdown of how long it takes to do X, Y, and Z. So for an oil change, commonly that's like three tenths. Um, for, you know, a minor service oil change tire rotation, that's like five tenths, like a half an hour. Uh, for, you know, replacing a cabin filter, maybe that's an hour. You get, you get the idea. So, you know, to do an alignment, there's a certain labor time. So for just about every standard automotive action you have, there is a time associated with that. So as a technician, you get paid by how much flag time. So in other words, when you're done with the job, what you do is you write down how many billable hours that you performed work on that vehicle. So if you did an oil change and you did that cabin air filter and all that, say it comes out to like 1.3 hours. You fill out like a little flag or somebody does somewhere, maybe it's a service writer, fills that out and puts that on the back of the work order and that's what you get paid for. So, and, and here's the thing, it can work both ways. Like say for instance, you can get that cabin air filter done in about 10 minutes. Well, you got paid an hour for it. Awesome. <laughs> because if you did like, you know, eight of those in a day, you just got paid for that day, technically. Uh, and it took you an hour to do it. So for in one hour, you can make an entire day's paycheck. Conversely, say you get a problem in, and that problem could come in, oh, many shapes and forms. Uh, I've had days where I've had the entire car disassembled, literally disassembled. <laughs> Looking at all that, scratching my head going, hmm, um, not getting paid for this. You can spend all day on something and make an hour, a half hour. So that, that all needs to balance out. And what this does, okay, this is the purpose of this video. Now that you understand what the flat rate system is, this is how it works in the workplace, at least as far as how I've seen. Uh, as, a, as a technician, you're always trying to get ahead. You're always trying to beat that book time because, let's face it, that's human nature. You want to do as good as you possibly can. You're not paid on a salary system. You're pay, you, you're, you don't get X amount every week for your paycheck. You get X amount based on how many hours you build. Well, here's the thing. For your employer, for every hour you bill, they also get a piece of that. So the more hours you bill, they're motivated, or let's put it this way, the more hours you bill, the more money they make. So it's not just you making money, it's your employer making money. And for the employer, it works out because it motivates a person to get some work done. And as a shop owner, that's what you want. You, you want to be profitable. Um, so the best way to motivate the, your, your employees is, you know, put that little carrot in front of you. That's what the flat rate system does. The flat rate system also kills quality. Uh, you, you'll find some technicians cutting corners. Uh, let's go back to bad mechanics, the whole reason why this, we're having this flat rate discussion because a lot of it may be based on that. Because you, you, can't, you can't take something like auto repair, which can vary so much. I mean, and you can't do this cookie cutter thing to it. You can't say that, okay, every oil change is gonna bill at three tenths. What if you go to the oil change and you pull the drain plug out and it's stripped? 
Well, then you watch my video on how to repair a drain plug in a strip, a strip pan, and, and hopefully you can move on with your life. Hopefully that saved you some time. But that's just a for instance. But that's more common than not. So for things to go off without a hitch like they're supposed to go is actually more rare than things, you know, than, than things not going well. So it's, it's more likely that things are not going to go well during the course of a repair than it is for them to go well. Um, we kind of talked about that in some of the other videos also. So yeah, my opinion on it, they used to, you know, my service writer used to say, wow, you got that done fast. And I resented that because that to me put me in that place where I'm cutting corners. I didn't cut corners. That's the thing is working at a dealer. You can do this because it is closer to the cookie cutter thing. I mean, it's not always, but it's the closest you're going to get to that cookie cutter, you know, machinery to where a car comes in it needs a certain it needs actually you know it needs actually you do it because uh, you've seen it a hundred times the guy that you work with has seen it a hundred times and everybody knows that that's how it goes including the service writer so the service writer already has you diagnosed before it even rolls into your bay fine whatever you're gonna resent that but you know at the end of the day it's just how the world works you got that done really fast well no I didn't um, I got it done efficiently and when I when I say that what I'm speaking to is I didn't cut the corners. I found a way to do the job efficiently. I found a way to where I don't have to remove this to do this. Take, take my ignition diagnosis video, for instance. Instead of just throwing a distributor in something, which is too easy, instead of trying to figure out if it's a cool air igniter, just sell them the whole distributor and be done with it. So you just pop the whole thing out and be done. Well, here I am pulling a distributor cap off, coming up with a test that you can figure out just like that. Is it, are we getting a primary signal or not? Oh, you did that fast. No, I did it efficiently. And if you work efficiently as a technician, you can be a quality technician and produce quality work. And you can also make some decent money because I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I made some really decent money. I mean, my average, my average work week was, uh, I'd say 50 ish hours, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I'm going to add another element in the dealership where I worked. It was an individual flat rate. That can get kind of cutthroat in a dealership. You got a lot of guys all competing for a paycheck. Individual flat rate can be ruthless, um, especially if you know there's the workplace dynamics, not just with there's technicians, but with your service writers. That can be a debacle. <laughs> That's a cool word. But what I worked on was a team system. And the way the team flat rate system works is you have a group of guys, in my case it was four of us, that are all working for the same paycheck. So in other words, I bill 20 hours in a particular day. The guy working next to me bills 30 hours. The guy working next to him bills 15. You add all those hours up at the end of the day and split them up four ways evenly. So it doesn't matter if you did all the work. The other guys that didn't do any work get paid and vice versa. So that can create its own set of problems. And for management on that stage, it's like it's something that's self-policing, let's say. I don't know if that's self-policing or not. Uh, it was difficult sometimes. And then other times where like, say I had some mystery electrical problem I had to track down and I had to spend the whole day doing it. And I had that whole car apart. Those guys were out there working, knocking out the services and the other work. Well, I spent all day on something not knowing how much we were going to get paid for it. Uh, so, you know, there, there are days where it works out and days where it doesn't work out, just like everything. But as far as how the flat rate system affects the quality of the work done, yes, it can adversely affect the quality of work that's done, particularly for those technicians who are just interested in making a paycheck. Um, and those may and those people may end up on investigative news programs. Um, it's sad, but do you blame the system or do you blame the technician? Uh, I'm going to say both. Uh, I'm going to say as a technician, you need to show, show some personal responsibility and you need to step up and take pride in what you do. A lot of you out there do. A lot of you are like really vehement and animate about you know, the quality of work that you put out and I, I love you for it. 
you're you're helping the rest of us who care about what we do maintain that level of professionalism that I think should go with being an automotive technician. Then there are those out there who work the system, you know, and, and that's what they do. And I, I don't care what profession you're in, there's going to be that guy, girl. They're, they're just going to be there. And, and it's, it's really unfortunate. And with the flat rate system, it can be abused. So the long and the short of it is, it's probably not going to change anytime soon. It's been done this way since probably since auto mechanics started. And it's probably going to continue to be done this way for some time. But ultimately, I think it's up to you to be responsible for the work that you do and give the customer what they pay for. That's the bottom line. If the customer gives you money to perform a task, a service that, that they need from you, you need to deliver that. Even if it pays half an hour and it takes you two, you got to do it. But, you know, see what you can work out. Maybe you can get more money. Um, it depends. A, a, lot of it, a lot of it is in how you sell the work. And that'll be another video, how to sell the work. I, I think that might be the next one. Um, so that you make sure that you're compensated for your education and the time you put into something. Uh, that is also important. But speaking to the flat rate system, uh, it's, it's a double-edged sword, just like just about everything that's out there um, in the automotive world. Anyway, so that's my take on it. Um, I'm very interested in your opinion. Go ahead and post it in the comments below. Uh, I'm Eric the Car Guy, also known as ETCG1. You can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com or follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Or you can be a fly buzzing around my head. Seriously. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. See you later.